Hi, I've just finished listening to a book on Audible and it is Glorious Expert, ex, I'll start again, Glorious Exploits by Ferdia Lennon. It won the, was it the Waterston Debut Novel of the Year? Something like that. If I've got it wrong, sorry, it won something. And I had such fun with this book. Um, having studied classics in the past, I've, I've anything that's got a Greek vibe to, to it, I will pick up. And this one sounded so good. I was, I was always going to pick this one up. Um, and I think listening to it on Audible, the author narrates it himself. The characters just leapt out. Whether they'd have leapt out as much if I was reading it, I don't know, but hearing the voices, it seemed to add add something. Um, we are in Syracuse in 421 BC, Peloponnesian Wars, and the Athenians have been defeated. So the Syracusans, what are they going to do with all of these prisoners? They're not going to spend money building prisons or anything like that. They just throw them all in the disused quarries where they're just going to be left to rot, rot away. Um, two out of work potters, Lampo and Gellon, these are our main characters and the, the book itself is in Lampo's voice. They regularly visit the quarries, they're out of work, they've got nothing else to do, they, they, they drink and visit the quarries, that's their lives. Um, when they visit the quarries, they take a bit of food to the prisoners. And every day they, they, they see these Athenians as they are wasting away. And every day there are more burials. They've, there's more stones covering bodies where, where the Athenians have died. Gallon and Lampo are close friends. Gallon is solid, silent, brooding. He's beset by tragedy. This tragedy hit him in his life. Lampo, on the other hand, is impulsive. Um, he is, he's almost larger than life and he will say the most outrageous things at the wrong time. He's a bit of a clown, but he's, there is something so endearing about him and hearing his voice on Audible. He, he just comes alive. And these two support each other. They always have done. Gellon has a love of theatre and Euripides in particular. And so he comes up with the idea of putting on Euripides play Medea using the Athenians because being Athenian you know, Athenian theatre, some of these prisoners are bound to know the play. Some of them are bound to have acted in the past, maybe. So he comes up with the idea of putting on the play with an Athenian cast, a cast of Athenian prisoners. And so they set about um, holding auditions for the, the main parts with promise of extra food, extra rations for those that are in the cast. And he decides that Euripides' latest play, The Trojan Women, should also be added to the programme. And that is the story. The story is them and the play. And there's, there's other bits as well, but I'm not going to add spoilers here. It's a story that is comic and dark at the same time. You have got wonderful comic touches in there, but there's also a heartbreaking darkness to it, a brutality, a violence. And then you've got other characters. You've got um, a merchant, a, a collector, from the Tin Isles, who has a touch, who likes to collect the macabre, you know, who armour that has got bloodstains on it, 
all that sort of stuff. You know, he, he's, he's into this sort of strange, he's collecting all this, this stuff. Um, you've got Lyra, who's a slave girl who works at the bar that Gellin and Lampo go to, that he develops a, a love for. Um, you've got another character who also visits the quarries regularly, but it, whereas Lampo and Gellon take food, he takes his club and regularly dishes out revenge on these Athenians. Um, then you've got the Athenians, the actors themselves, Pachés, who develops a friendship with Lampo. So you've got a friendship between Pachés and Gellon and Pe no, Pachés and Lampo and Pachés and, and Gellon and Lampo. You've got two different friendships. Um, and there you've got the woman who makes the costumes. You know, you've got a, such a wide range of characters in here that just make the book sing. And the ending, the ending was bittersweet, but I, 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 I enjoyed the ending, even though it was so bittersweet. Um, for all the comedy, as I said, this tragedy, this heartbreak. But because it's in the Irish voice, I, I don't know what it is about the Irish voice, but it stops it being so dark that you turn away. It, it makes you look at the aftermath of war, any war, the treatment of those who've been defeated. It also makes you think about friendship, of loyalty, of love. And it also introduces Euripides to the people who might never have come across him before, which is a, only a good thing, isn't it? This is for somebody who likes the classics. You know, let's have more Greek theatre. Um, I thought it was an absolutely super book. I, I wasn't sure what to expect. Um, especially when I started listening to it and it's you know, the, the Irish lilt and the F word that is thrown in reg with regular occurrence. But it it was just so, I don't know, it, it was alive, it sang. If I'd have read it, I don't know, but I so, so enjoyed listening to it and listening to the voices. So, um, Glorious Exploits by Ver Ferdia Lennon. I loved it. No more else. There's nothing else to say, really. So, um, I wonder what he'll do next because he is um, a classicist himself, I think. So, I, I just wonder what he's going to do with his next book. So, happy reading. Take care.